Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,872. This week, I'm celebrating the Quail, a motorsports gathering that takes place Friday, August 13th at the Quail Lodge and Golf Course in Carmel Valley, California. To learn more about this amazing event, go to Peninsula.com. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Grafton, Wisconsin, just down south of Road America, with a very special guest by the name of Tom Porter. Tom, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Absolutely, Mark. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I know you're a guy that knows how to operate a clutch, because I know you're a racer, and we're going to talk about that. But before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing that most people don't know about you, Tom? Oh, gosh. My first car was a 1982 Dodge Omni 024. Okay. Most people don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have to start somewhere, you know. Uh, was there anything about that first car that was endearing to you today? Not not anything at all. Nothing. <laughs> um, and that's probably why nobody knows about it. You know, it was the classic first car. It was rusty. You know, I grew up here in, in the Milwaukee area and... Uh, Drove that car, drove the wheels basically off the car. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things no one would ever have known. So, Well, I'm kind of the same way. My first car was an old grandma car. Kind of, It was a 67 Chevy Nova four-door uh, with the small engine, not the cool engine like the two-doors had. But it was a car, and it got me to the beach. I could put my surfboard on it and load my friends in it, but I couldn't wait to find something better, which ended up being a 67 Carmen Ghia that was my poor man's Porsche. So I felt much cooler in that car. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that you're moving up the ranks, you know, from the Nova. For <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah no absolutely. Well, let me give you a proper introduction, and we're going to dive into your very fun life. Tom Porter is the Senior Business Development Manager at Speedcore Performance Group, an American performance company where they, their engineers and artisans combine traditional craftsmanship with cutting-edge technology. They specialize in custom performance vehicles, carbon fiber composite part manufacturing, and engine integration, all designed and manufactured here in the United States. Tom grew up in the 70s and 80s, spending summers supporting his father and his road racing hobby at tracks in the Midwest. He started karting, rate, kart racing, I should say, in the mid-90s and has been restoring, touring, and racing vintage cars for over 20 years. He also has a passion for bicycles. We're going to learn more about Tom and Speedcore in a minute, but first a word from our valued sponsor, so give him a little love. And when we come back, we're going to be talking very cool machinery. Sit tight. Summer's here, thank goodness, and that means long, hot days. Covercraft's UVS custom sunscreens are quality made and are incredibly fast and easy to use. Your UVS sunscreen is custom tailored for your vehicle, and the accordion design ensures easy storage. Not only do they protect your dash and interior for maximum protection while parking in the sun, sunscreens keep your vehicle's interior significantly cooler. They're durable and dependable for years of use. I have one for all my vehicles and I use them every time I park my car when I'm not going to put the cover on. You can choose from a variety of colors including the original, their Premier Series and Carhartt designs. Your sunscreen is manufactured with the quality and attention to detail that's been the standard for Covercraft since 1965. And they make really great gifts too. Get your summer deal today if you use the code YEAH21, Y-E-A-H-21 at Covercraft.com. You'll get 10% off your Covercraft order. That's right. 10% off compliments of cars. Yeah. Simply use the code yeah21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Get your own custom sunscreen today. Most people don't think about their collector car insurance until their annual premium becomes due. Well, why wait and see if there are better options for your beloved rides? I didn't. Did you know if you change carriers before your policy runs out, your insurance company has to refund you the unearned portion of your policy premium? I did my homework. I shopped around and I found American Collectors Insurance. And that's who protects my Porsche Turbo. That's right, the one I call my orange crush. They've been protecting collector vehicles since 1976. 
I encourage you to call my friends at American Collectors Insurance. Ask them about their agreed value policy. And if your collector vehicle is on your regular auto policy, you will be shocked at the savings, not to mention the assurance, should something bad happen to your ride, that you'll get what your vehicle is actually worth. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 866- 224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green and Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call today. So, Tom, we are back. Let's dive a little deeper into the corner, and I'd love for you to share more about Speedcore Performance Group and what you guys do. I know all about you. You guys are having some incredible fun, but I want to hear it from your inside track here of the kind of machinery and the performance vehicles you guys build there because, oh, my gosh, they look so cool. So, Tom, take the wheel. Well, first of all, thanks, Mark, for for having me. You're welcome. So here at Speedcore, we focus on American Muscle. Our Basically, Detroit Iron is where we have based our, our pro touring builds. We are involved with advanced chassis design, integrating composites into these builds, power and modern engine integration, and handcrafted interiors. My my role is basically a project manager. I interface with our small team here and our, our client base. The goal is to build four cars a year that are at the highest level of pro touring and respect the history and the lineage and the the design look and feel of those early Detroit Iron cars. We specialize in 68 to 70 Chargers and 70 to 73 Cudas. Most people would understand us as B-body or B to Mm E-body specialists. So that's really where we're ingrained. That's where we our focus is right now. So these vehicles, nothing is left untouched. The way I look at the cars you guys are building, when you take a shell of a vehicle and you take this whole thing apart and everything is redone, right? Absolutely correct. So we will take a, a very good example of a, let's just say, a 68 Charger and we will scan, digitally scan, the exterior, the interior, all the basis for the car. Then we will have those models. And from there, we can then design the frame, all the suspension pickup points, and everything around that particular vehicle. Mm -hmm. B-bodies can involve chargers, roadrunners, all the the, the, the different B-body makes off of a Belvedere original car. From there, we we then take an original chassis um, shell and we will strip that down and we will dip it and it'll begin its process and it'll it'll come out. We will then put it on top of our frame and then start the, the process of hanging suspension, engine integration, cage, custom flooring, custom interior, and, and and it just kind of morphs from there. Yeah, morph. Indeed. You know, I look at your website, you got that 70 Dodge Charger you call Hellraiser, which just yeah. looks incredibly yeah. mean. You got the, the other 70, the Evolution, which is just nuts. But you also get into vehicle, or like parts. And uh, I also see in your website, C8 Corvettes and Dodge wide bodies, and you've got merchandise for sale. And I mean, you kind of get your hands into a couple other things too. Absolutely. So with the composite shop that we have, we have an autoclave on site. We augment our pro touring build with component parts and sales. Oftentimes when we go forward with a project and we decide that we're going to tool a a vehicle to do some composite upgrades for it, we will tool it in a way so that we can produce additional components as opposed to a one-off situation for a a custom hood or a custom part for, for a single vehicle or maybe one vehicle. In the case of the C8, we decided that our proprietor, uh, Jim Kazmarek, 
had a C8 and was interested in some of the, the carbon work on his car. Mm-hmm. So we, we looked at that. We went ahead and designed our version of the uh, rocker extensions and the front splitter, which we considered the aero kit, and we tooled in that. And when we did, we were able to produce those and we offer those for sale to the end consumer. Nice. I mean, I go through your site and there's so many cool things. I mean, the Boss 302, Mustangs, uh, Shelby GT350s, yeah. the modern version of those things. We talked about yeah. that, the, the Camaros, even some truck stuff, the Demon. Yep. I mean, you, you turn cars into monsters is basically uh, not only looks, but performance wise too, right? Absolutely. You know, a lot of those platforms, the the late model stuff, the cars, you know, in the GT350R example, those are spectacular cars. Dodge Demon's another great car. You know, our our goal is to optimize what was already done and make it lighter and and make them faster. Right. Effectively. Things that those manufacturers couldn't do because of cost limitations, but everybody wants to customize their car. So you can you can have one of those modern cars and just make it your own. Absolutely. That is correct. Yeah. Are you guys going to have a presence at the Quail event this year? We are. We're actually, uh, Speedcore will have a booth at the Quail. The vehicle that will be there will be uh, Kevin Hart Hellraiser. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the actor. The 70 Charger. Yeah. That yeah. car will be on display. Um, that has a, a seven liter elephant crate engine, uh, making over a thousand horsepower mm. at the wheels. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that complete package with the car finished in composite carbon fiber is about 3,400 pounds. Oh. And, uh, it is every bit the, the piece of machinery that you might, might expect. Extremely quick and absolutely fantastic to drive. Uh, it really, it really is a great car. I can't even imagine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's just, oh, what a killer car. Have you guys been and displayed at the quail before? No, this will be our first, uh, visit to the quail, but it makes sense for the type of bespoke offering that our brand, uh, that, that, that we offer. Um, yeah. the client base there is certainly a target for us. And, have you uh, been to the quail yourself before? I have not. I've been to Monterey Car Week. Mm-hmm. Um, I've not with any of my own vehicles, but uh, I have some other fellow vintage racers that um, have some pretty neat machinery and yeah. um, got an invitation to go out there one other time and going to, I guess it was called Laguna Seca at the time. I don't know if it is anymore. But oh, that's what we. That's what all of us old guys call it. It's, it's always Laguna yeah. Seca. I know it's got ties to WeatherTech. They're a sponsor there, but it's Laguna yeah. Seca. Yeah. Yeah, and no, so I, I haven't been, but I'm looking forward to it, and uh, it should be a special event, certainly, for uh, for Speed Corps. You are in for a treat. I've been to the Quail many, many times, even was at the very first one, and it's just, it is one of the most unique special events for that week, and it's, I mean, it's an all-inclusive event. Uh, they limit the sales of tickets, so it's not as crowded. Uh, the food, the drink, the people, the way it's set up there is just you're in for a magical treat, and uh, they sell out uh, every year, so just getting a ticket to get in that place is very challenging, but uh, you're in for a, a magical time, you know, that's for sure. This is very cool. Now, when you think about what you do for a living now, I've got to think, for a guy who's been into cars ever since you were helping your dad race back in the day, you must pinch yourself every day. What's your favorite part of being a part of Speed Corps? Oh, gosh. Working with the artisans is the most special part. We have a really incredible team of fabricators, composite engineers, paint and body workers and you know, and, and mechanics that make up speed core. We have four distinct areas of the business and being able to work with them and then interface between the clients and what their vision is for their car kind of be the conduit between the customer and what our artisans are capable of mm-hmm. is a dream job. There's no doubt for me. And it, it's fantastic to be able to do that on a daily basis. Yeah, there you go. You're living the life for sure. You know, I like to ask my guests about a driving inspiration, somebody who is a key mentor in their life, someone who was very influential. Who was that for you? Uh, without doubt, my, my dad. He was involved in, in road racing, since I was born and there's a story, you know, long legacy and history with the porters 
involved with Elkhart Lake road racing before Elkhart Lake even existed. And that's probably for another time. But yeah, he was always involved with cars. He had a tremendous drive, he was very intelligent, was a spectacular musician, kind of as a side note. You know, he went to work every day. He had that Midwest work ethic. And um, he, he, he ran his business. He did all the, you know, I guess he checked all the boxes for me in so many ways. And um, um, he pursued his hobby of road racing. And uh, he did it well. And he, he gave back to the local uh, racing community long after he retired. You know, he hung up his helmet. And he was involved as a steward and, and, and kind of managed new drivers and was involved in the Sports Car Club of America and Road America board member and things like that so nice. yeah he he really was a guiding force for me you know the the dna is there you know? so. <laughs> motor oil in the veins <laughs> if you will <laughs> you got it, i yeah. love it i love it let's take a short break and we come back i want to talk about a big challenge you've overcome so keep that in mind we'll be right back keep the seatbelts on what began as a charitable car show has grown into the world's greatest collector car auctions raising over $133 million for charitable organizations to date. For nearly 50 years, automotive enthusiasts from all over the world have enjoyed the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auctions, and I'm a huge fan. Regarded as the barometer of the collector car industry, their auctions are world-class lifestyle events, where thousands of the world's most sought-after unique and valuable automobiles cross the block in front of a global audience, in person, on TV, or streamed online. Barrett Jackson produces the world's greatest collector car auctions in Scottsdale, Arizona, Palm Beach, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, and new for 2021, Houston, Texas. The excitement of Barrett Jackson auctions is contagious, and a unique experience is not to be missed. Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auctions. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, Smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions. Ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARS yeah when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So, Tom, let's talk about a big challenge you faced, an obstacle, maybe even a big failure. And the reason I ask this question of my guests is to have them share the lesson learned and how they came out of that in a positive way. So if somebody listening out there is going through something similar, they can see the light at the end of the tunnel and that it's more than that train coming down the track. So what was that big challenge for you? Uh, well, there's actually two that come to mind. Mm -hmm. Being in this career, you have to make time to turn off and it's really important because you become so passionate and so enmeshed in your work and your hobby. It's tough to draw a line between those two things and make time for the things that aren't automotive in focus. Mm -hmm. That's important because you, you will burn out. You will find yourself the people around you won't appreciate <laughs> you're not a, uh, you know, giving them the, the, the proper commitment, you know, friends and family and so oh, forth. Oh, yeah, sure. The other thing is is um, I'm adapting to some hearing loss recently, mm. um, and that's a direct result of, of motor racing and exposure to cars and, and all the things. And so that, that's been sort of a running adaptation for me just as a kind of a personal thing there. So, uh, yeah, those are, those, are, those are challenges for sure. Well, no doubt. Uh, being around cars, yeah, it's – a big, big challenge, and it's frustrating. I've had family members that have dealt with hearing issues, and you, you kind of want to ignore it. And I think being a guy, we tend to ignore health stuff as long as, or as long as we can, or until our, or if we had a, a fortunate spouse to keep pushing us, saying you need to go deal with this, <laughs> finding a solution yeah. that 
works well for us. But I think fortunately, from what I understand, there are some some great options these days, very much different than the older days with hearing issues and so forth. But the other part of this is an important thing in figuring out how to turn yourself off and find time for other things. Even though we love what we do, it can consume our lives. And it's so important to find another alternative. Have you found what that is? I mean, for some people, it's gardening or other people, it's something completely different. Like your dad was a musician. That might have been his way of getting away from the cars for a while and doing something different. Have you found that that kind of hobby thing or a a way to to turn yourself off? I shouldn't say it. It's kind of a funny way to say it, but I know what you mean. Turn it off. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. For me, it's cycling. Ah, that's right. You like bikes. Absolutely. So that is, you know, a way for me to kind of harken back to, you know, what it was like to being a kid. And I grew up in the, in the, my, my first career was, was working in the bicycle industry. Oh, and okay. I, I, I ran local bike shops in the Milwaukee area. And then I, I worked for a, a guy named Richard Schwinn. And Richard. Wait a uh, minute. Like the uh, Schwinn? Um, absolutely. Oh yeah. my gosh. And, uh, so they had, uh, Richard had, uh, in the, early 90s had purchased the Schwinn Paramount Design Group factory in Waterford, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. When he had done that, um, I came to work for him in a quality control role, and they began Waterford Precision Cycles. And these are hand-built, brazed steel frames, and they, uh, a guy named Mark Muller was a designer and engineer there, and uh, just a fabulous place to work, but it the cycling for me has just been a passion since I was a kid all the way through there. And then uh, I left Waterford and I went to work for a, a company right here uh, in Mequon, Wisconsin called Hayes Bicycle Group. And Hayes had acquired uh, six or seven brands from the mountain bike industry. And one of them was Answer Products. And Answer made pedals and stems and seat posts and carbon fiber handlebars and, and all sorts of cool componentry that you would you would hang on your on your mountain bike wow. yeah i ran that brand for about 16 years and um, i was looking for a change but cycling is where i go when i need to turn off the car stuff nice and just you know get kind of realigned and uh i, I really enjoy it for and i live in a place where there's great roads to ride there's great mountain biking right in this area as well Oh, lucky you. That's cool. Gosh, when I was a kid, I remember wanting a Schwinn so bad. My parents really couldn't afford it. And they said, well, you know, you can do some work around the neighborhood. So I started taking care of people's yards and lawns and washing cars. And I saved up enough. And my, my first Schwinn was that classic cherry red Schwinn Stingray. You know, the classics. <laughs> and I really wanted one of those shifter ones. And I got myself a orange crate. Remember those? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you were that cool guy. It was, oh man, I love that thing. And then it evolved into the (laughs) Schwinn 10 speed when the Stinger, you know, the 10 speeds came out with the handlebars, you know, hanging down. And yeah, that was, oh yeah, I worked really hard for those bikes. Yeah, but I I sure took good care of them. I wish I still had them, but uh, they've they've all all gone away. Hey, let's share a special uh, vehicle story. Now, I know you're into vintage racing and uh, also love cars and so forth. Is there one special vehicle in your life that you'd like to share a little story about? Yeah. You know, cars for me are, the story is every bit as important. So there is, there is a particular car that I sent you a picture of. It's a 1952 Allard. Yeah. It's one of 12 that has motor mounts for a 331 Hemi. And, um, that's a car that, uh, the, we, it's called the, the family car. And it's a car I restored with my dad. Um, and we finished it in 2005. Um, and he actually had lung cancer. Mm. And so when we embarked on this journey to restore that car, um, he was involved as much as he could be. And um, we restored it in 2005. And we took it to Elkhart Lake to the Road America concourse, the race car concourse. And we won the Road and Track oh my gosh. Reserve Award for it. And um, he, it was a fantastic completion to, to this car. And you know, he, he got to drive it with his original racing helmet, um, got to enjoy the car before he died. And that was that was just spectacular. So, But that car has a lot of history to this area. It was raced in the streets of Elkhart Lake in 1952. It was imported by Vince Franatelli along with two other Allards in the spring of 52. 
And then it went up to uh, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, where Carl Keycaper put a 331 Hemi in the car. And then it got delivered to St. Paul, Minnesota, to a guy named Eddie Jones. And Eddie ice raced the car. Um, ice on Lake, raced on Lake, it? Yeah, on Lake Phelan in, Min- in Minnesota. And so this car, you know, they were sports cars that were, you know, that were raced. So it's got a really cool Midwest history to it. And, um, you know, we, we've kept the car ever since. And uh, we show it. I drove it to work today. As a matter of fact. <laughs> And, uh, nice. you, you just, you, yeah. So, um, yeah, if you don't drive them, they go bad as you're well aware. So, yeah. Um, you know, there's a local guy up here that raced in Allard and we borrowed his car for a photo shoot once a long time ago. And I got to drive that thing. I'm like, holy cow. The people that race these things were either crazy or combination of crazy and very talented because they were monsters, very competitive cars, very cool, big power, but boy, you were exposed in those things. You know, they were just, Oh yeah. 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 Uh. They used to call the drivers the, the great escape artists because <laughs> there, there, were, there were no seatbelts, and that was by design. So you could, yeah, jump out. Yeah, absolutely. You jumped out. You know, Mass and Gregory, I mean, some of the great drivers, Fred Wacker. Yeah, it, the list is long. They were fascinating cars, really fast, and the transmissions were never built strong enough to support any of the you know, the, the real horsepower these cars were producing. But. A few listeners can go to uh, Tom's. Show notes page on the Cars Yeah website, and you'll see a picture of that magnificent car. What a what a treat to have. I'm going to crawl into your head here, Tom. I'm going to be your psychologist today. If you were manifest as a vehicle, what would you be and why? Oh, gosh. I would, I think I would be a Ford GT40, and simply because I'm loud, <laughs> <laughs> um, I can be uh, uh, hot. I, I think it's reliable. Those are kind of adjectives that might suit me i the car in terms of personality i i you know a 69 gt40 you know was was driven by jackie oliver and jackie x two mentors for me i think they're tremendous drivers and and talents and they could get in anything and be quick so Mm -hmm. i like to think myself of being able to carry some of those attributes (laughs) i like it yeah so forevermore tom will be known as loud hot reliable and quick (laughs) <laughs> oh what a wonderful car man yeah what a special what a special vehicle is there a book that you've read that you'd like to share that you've really enjoyed yeah as a matter of fact there's a book that just came out and the author's name is robert birmingham he is from this area he recently wrote a book about fred wacker the gentleman driver and fred drove the eight ball allard and there was actually two or three eight ball allard that's a great book. Just finished reading it. It does a great job of discussing the the early 1950s uh, road racing and how it developed in the United States, specifically in the Midwest right here in Elkhart Lake. Mm. And um, it, it's a fascinating read. And the pictures are, are tremendous. And, and uh, Bob dug into many of the local uh, kind of archives, you know, that are owned by people of, of pictures and images of that car um, from the streets of Elkhart Lake and, you know, Fred Wacker's history. And uh, it's it's a great read. I think uh, I highly recommend it. Imagine being a race car driver and your name's Fred Wacker. I mean, I'm not so sure yeah. if that's an omen or not, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that's yeah. the first time that book's been recommended, which is great. I love it when guests recommend new books. You can go to the Cars yeah website and click on the resources tab. You'll see a, a box there that says guest recommended books. There's over 2,000 books listed by my inspiring automotive enthusiasts, including this book, Gentleman Driver, the story of Fred Wacker and the eight ball Allard. Love it. I'm going to get my hands on that. All right. We are up to the ultimate drive. So uh, I have the ability to allow you to pick any car in the world and anyone to drive with, living or deceased, and you can go anywhere you want in this magical vehicle. So what are you going to be in, who are you going to be with, and where are you going to be going? Oh, wow. Well, this touches a couple bases for me. I guess the person I would be with would be my wife. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I think my next career, if I could ever retire, would just to be her chauffeur mm-hmm. wherever she wants to go. <laughs> I just, I'll just, you just tell me where you want to go and, uh, and I'll drive you. What a nice but guy. If, if you were going to ask what I would be in, I would ask her to choose. But since she would never answer that, she would defer to me. And I guess I would say, uh, 
1955 Mercedes Benz 300 SL Gull. Oh, that would be nice. that would be my that, that would be the the two seater. Yeah, you know that that would be my choice. That would be it. Um, I don't think there's a, a for a three liter inline six four speed car. I mean, there, there's nothing better in the world for me. Hey, I've talked to so many people who do a lot of touring and driving all over the world, and that's probably the top pick for a great car that's comfortable, and especially if you want to be able to communicate with your co-driver or your passenger, uh, the Gullwing versus the Roadster, even the Roadster with the hardtop option or the top up, you can at least talk to each other. But those car, those cars are an old car that actually starts and runs, super reliable. <laughs> and yeah. and for an old car, they actually feel like a much newer car. I've, I've had the pleasure of driving one, and they're just, this one was a Roadster, but they're just so wonderful. So I think you picked a great one to go with your wife in. I appreciate that, yeah. You know, the Porters actually had one of those cars back in the in the early, in the 50s. Uh, my grandfather had one, and, uh, wow. you know, I, I never, I was, wasn't alive yet, but I guess my, my one, it's one of the reasons I chose it. Because I've never driven one. I've, I've had the opportunity to ride in one. But, boy, it sure just seems like a great car. And to kind of channel some of that is always something that I go for, I guess. Yeah, you know, some of the uh, auction houses at, at Car Week, or I think there's a couple of those going to be available. You only need about, about a million bucks to buy one these days. Oh, man. They've become very, yeah, very, yeah. they've actually come down a bit back in the 2014, 15, they were up in the million five, million six range. They've kind of come back down a little bit. They're always going to be a million dollar plus car, I think, because they're just bellwether car for a classic old sports car and dead reliable, awesome to drive. I mean, they yeah. just, they tick every box. That's cool. And it's cool that your grandfather had one too. Do you have any idea where his car ended up? Is it still around? I don't know. He bought it from Hoffman in Chicago, and my grandmother drove the car to the east side of Milwaukee, and he didn't like the color of the car. And as odd as that was, he drove it for a while and then ended up getting taking it and getting a one XK120 Jaguar. Oh, wow. And so that actually, um, once that car came home, that car then which preceded the Gullwing. It kind of went backwards for the 120. That car was held on to that for a while and then um, traded that car in for a, a Volkswagen Beetle. Oh, oh, my gosh. What was he thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The things, yeah. But, it was, you know, the, the 120 wasn't, wasn't practical at all for the, no. the weather here no. in the Midwest. The Beetle happened to be the first Beetle that, uh, the local concourse dealership that was just owned by Bill Wiestoff, who's also a famous, you know, road racing driver from this era, owned. And so it's, there's all sorts of funny stories around all of it. So. Well, yeah, going from a, a 300 SL to a 120 and then a bug. I mean, it's like yeah, you know, I know. eclectic guy. Interesting story. Well, you've taken us on a wonderful trip today, Tom. I'm so glad we've been able to talk. You're going to have so much fun at the Quail. Before I let you go. Yeah. Is there a parting piece of wisdom, words of guidance you might leave us with? Um, yeah. You know, I think um, people in this industry, you know, it's about passion and you want to pursue passion. And you won't discover passion. You have to develop it. And a lot of that has, in my opinion, over the years that I've been doing this, you know, you want to craft the jobs that you're doing to spend more time exploring tasks that you're passionate about and work with those people that inspire you. That's really important. Here at Speed Corps, like I mentioned earlier, there's a, a team of artisans and, and they have so much collective experience and knowledge and passion just, it, it comes through the products that we, we produce, these cars and the components. If you can find that passion and develop it, that's going to be the key to being successful. Awesome advice there. I would encourage you folks, if uh, listeners today, if you don't know about Speed Core, you can find it at Speed Core, which is S P E E D K O R E, speedcore.com. Speed Core Performance Group, building dreams for people, no doubt. This has been a wonderful talk. I want to do a shout out. Thank you to my friends at Con Media. Uh, Heather Buchanan, Noah Thanos for connecting Tom with me today. They do a wonderful job, not only of bringing me great guests, but also of uh, helping the quail event take place. And if you're fortunate enough to be at the quail this year, just in another couple of weeks here, 
uh, go check out Speedcore and that magnificent car they have on display. I think you'll be very, very happy at what you see. It's insane. Tom, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your experiences and your life with our listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you at the Quail of Motorsports Gathering. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. You're welcome. This was fun. I'm honored to say that my charity of choice here at Cars yeah is Tech Force Foundation. They help young people find an education and career that aligns with their passions. For those who love cars, problem solving, and working with their hands, a career as a professional automotive technician is the perfect fit for a fulfilling life. We're all wired differently, and not every successful career demands a four-year university. Technical education and the skilled trades matter, and we need qualified skilled technicians to keep our vehicles rolling. Learn more about how you can support tomorrow's driving force and workforce of technicians at techforce.org, like I do here at Cars Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.